Tunisia's President Kais Saied has appointed a new Prime Minister. He's tasked Najla Boudin Romdani with forming a government. She'll be the first woman to do so. The move comes after four political parties formed a coalition to oppose Saied on Tuesday. Opposition politicians have warned they'll call for more protests unless he reverses his move to seize power. Well, Barnard Smith is in Tunis for us. Uh, this is coming at a time of great pressure for the president, isn't it? Yes, Najla Boudan Ramdan is now going to take on a lot of that pressure. She was, until today, a little-known professor of engineering. Previously, she'd worked for the World Bank, and now she's been thrust right into the heart of the spotlight and Tunisia's political crisis. Now, ordinarily, under the Tunisian constitutional system, the president appoints the prime minister, who then appoints members of her cabinet, and this all has to be approved by parliament, but the president has suspended parliament. So he's appointed Najla Boudin Ramdan as prime minister, but there'll be no parliamentary approval of this. Now, one of the complaints of the civil society groups and this coalition of political parties who spoke on Tuesday was that President Kai Saeed in the last two months had not spoken to them, had not approached them, had not tried to engage them in dialogue. And this prime minister has been appointed without the discussions with the political parties. Do, we do not yet know what their reaction is going to be to her appointment and whether that will calm things down for the time being. Bernard, thanks very much indeed. That's Bernard Smith, live for us in Tunis. Let's bring in Sherif al Khadi. He's a political commentator and a former parliamentary officer. So he's joining us live from Tunis as well. Good to have you with us on Al Jazeera. Just taking up on the point that Bernard was making there, if there is no parliament, how does this work? Well, if there is no parliament, this is going to work according to the uh, last presidential order, the order 117, uh, that is the uh, Prime Minister designate Mrs. Najla uh, Boudin will form a cabinet, and then this cabinet will be just maybe formally approved uh, by a sworn in ceremony uh, in front of the president. I side. So literally and unfortunately, there will be no parliamentary approval for this uh, for this cabinet. And according to uh, a recent video published minutes ago, uh, in which. President Said uh, uh, they delivered a little speech of a few minutes uh, in, in the, with the presence of Mrs. Boudin. The government, the new cabinet, would be formed in the next few hours or few days uh, at, uh, at, uh, at, the, at maximum. The president, I would imagine, must have known what the, the political process is and therefore would have known that having no parliamentary approval for the appointment of a prime minister is essentially rendering it somewhat in ineffective. Why do you think he's trying to achieve by doing this? Well, uh, President Thay Said has been quite clear even since the uh, presidential campaign. He is against or opposed to many parts of the 2014 constitution. He wants a new regime, and he's uh, uh, really willing to change the uh, the, the political system uh, at probably any cost. And it's now quite clear, especially after the decision of September 22nd with the uh, presidential order, that he is willing to change it at any cost, whatever uh, uh, the. Uh, political parties are saying or their positions, and he's counting mainly on the, the huge uh, popular support that, he's, uh, that he has uh, till, now, till today. So uh, uh, President Kais Saeed is moving uh, forward with, with uh, his uh, um, uh, clear intention of reforming, amending the constitution, the political system, and uh, his philosophy of bottom-up uh, uh, democracy. Mm. And the main targets, uh, according to the last speech of the president, of this cabinet would be, uh, first, first of all, fighting corruption, and then uh, delivering the necessary uh, daily needs or daily life uh, daily life needs for the Tunisians transportation education infrastructure so uh, and counting on that the fact that this the first female prime minister this would uh, uh, this is, could be seen as a peer stunt or uh, a new legitimacy for uh, for the president I side who will see in the upcoming hours and days.
Tell us a little bit about the new Prime Minister. There seems to be very little about her in a very brief search, I admittedly, um, online. What do you know about her background? Has she got uh, sort of government experience that would be relevant to the post? Uh, she was, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, her only political experience was that she was member of the uh, cabinet of the min uh, Minister of Higher Education uh, in 2015. Uh, but now she's in charge of implementing the programs of the World Bank in the, uh, in the same Minister of Higher Education. But uh, talking about political experience, I think, just like President Pai Said, she is rather an academician and, uh, from the academic uh, sphere rather than being from the political sphere that is uh, rejected as well by the president and the population as well for now. Mm. You mentioned before that there was uh, significant support for the president in Tunisia and what he's attempting to do. <clears throat> At the same time, of course, there is also significant opposition. We've seen the protests in the streets against um, uh, uh, suggestions, for example, that he is, is essentially a coup, that he's seizing power. We've seen the opposition groups who have been forming this coalition to uh, oppose him. Do you think that this in any way is going to be seen as some step forward for the president in an effort to try and satisfy his opponents? Do you think his opponents are actually going to accept any of this, including, of course, those who are opposed to him on the streets of Tunisia? I don't, so far, well, we don't have the, the feedbacks from the main political parties uh, representing the main opposition to, uh, to, to side decision. But what is, what is quite obvious and clear is that according to at least the positions of the four, uh, uh, the four political parties that held press conferences yesterday in Tunis, Afet uh, Tunis, uh, Democratic Current, uh, the uh, Forum for, uh, for, for Liberties, and in, uh, in addition to uh, the Republican Party, it's quite clear that they're not uh, considering to work with this government according to, uh, to their uh, last statements. Maybe this, the, their position would change in the upcoming hours and weeks, but this for sure would need a sort of a dialogue between them and the, whether the cabinet or the president and a new, let's say, rules of the, uh, of the actual game, because so far what we are seeing is that the president is uh, willing to, uh, to, to discuss with, uh, with no one, no dialogue uh, whatsoever so far. Mm. Sheriff Rodri, we appreciate you as always being on Al Jazeera. Thank you very much indeed for your time.